Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I thought I'd give you guys like a, a nice little heads up. Um, you may be able to find some decent deals at your local garden center, Lowe's or Home Depot. I just found this pretty good deal here for a two cubic foot bag of, of uh, this Kellogg brand of garden soil. Um, it was $3.50 a bag, which is pretty good. I mean, that's really cheap for this amount of soil that's organic. Um, however, I'm in no way promoting this particular brand here. It is honestly really bad soil and it needs a number of years to really uh, compost down. Um, we probably have to amend this with something. If I really would, you know, I'm going to take it seriously uh, and use it in like my potting soil as an example for my fruit trees. Uh, even in, in the garden beds, I think I don't want to be using a whole lot of it and I want to go over uh, what I'm using it for and then talk about soil with you guys for a bit So I'm using the soil here because I got it at such a cheap price It's really the only reason why I'm buying it. And I need a lot of material This upcoming spring because we joined a community garden plot guys We only have this one garden bed behind me and then we also have a garden bed That's in the cold frame here. We're actually going to put the snap peas in the ground today. We're transplanting those um, so I'm limited with my garden space, but I have a 30 by 30 plot that I joined. And it's not a permanent plot, but if it was, I would put a lot of material down. Um, I would have probably, uh, you know, many more bags than what I have laid down on these beds. I mean, it would be like three or four inches of compost creating these beds in the 30 by 30 plot. And I just can't do that. Um, with this, with this uh, particular plot because this is an input that I have to put in every single year. Um, it's not permanent and they till the soil year after year. So essentially whatever I put into the soil now is not really gonna be there forever. Well, at least it's not gonna be there next year. And I'm gonna have to, in a sense, put down more material next year. So I'm gonna do the minimum. I'm gonna put down the minimum amount of soil, the cheapest soil I can find, something that's just gonna get me by so that I'm not you know, seeding directly into the ground. Um, so this is, you know, kind of just going to be an easier process. But honestly, if I use too much of this, and we're going to show you guys the differences between the soil that I like to use, which is the, the Just Natural Soil Conditioner. This is the brand of Just Natural over here. This is not the soil conditioner. This is the uh, cow manure. But this is the brand that I really like. It's organic, it's really well broken down. We'll talk about the differences and why I like it so much between these two, but I can't really find it anymore, um, which is really unfortunate. This past fall, the nursery, the big, it's like a big nursery that I normally get this stuff at, doesn't sell it anymore. And it's really disappointing because it is seriously some of the best soil that you can find in a bag. Um, so I'm going to have to look around, see if I can find it again. Maybe I can find something else that's an alternative. But I really do like this stuff because it's really well draining. Um, it has a lot of bark in it, which then breaks down. It's smaller pieces. It's pretty dense, but it has a lot of good drainage to it. And the compost is a, a good quality compost. It's not made of peat moss. And I'll show you guys here sort of the big difference between the two. If I look down in here, you can find most of this is indeed the, um, the just natural soil. And this is probably not the soil conditioner. This is probably the uh, mushroom compost right here. But it's, it's pretty similar. If I squeeze it, it's got a good moisture content, but it's not like, you know, like a sponge in a sense. You can see there's a nice worm in there. Now, if I were to go over and get some of this Kellogg soil, let me put you guys down for a minute have to open this up. You're going to see a really big difference. It's actually kind of slimy. And you can see when I bring this together like this, it's just like one solid piece that is more consistent to a sponge. So it's probably going to hold a lot more water to it. It's not as crumbly. It really is kind of like a sponge. Um, and it's not that well draining either. There are some bigger pieces in it. I'm going to just kind of break this up over here. And I, in fact, there's some pieces are too big. 
you can see here, so it's not really well broken down. It's kind of just like peat moss. And if I read the ingredients here, you can really tell it's uh, formulated with organic materials, more, one or more of the following, processed forest products, recycled forest products, arbor finds, peat, humus, sphagnum peat moss, or compost. But I'll tell you this right now, and there's, it depends on what state you're talking about here. Um, it has different uh, ingredient lists, which is crazy. But I'll tell you this, most of it's peat moss. Uh, not a lot of it is compost. It's slimy, guys. There's something about it that's really slimy. If I touch it with my hand, it's really not pleasant. And it really doesn't remind me of something that's healthy. And my biggest beef with this, I'm gonna show you guys a close up here of the soil. Oh, excuse me. Um, you'll see this is it right here. And it's got those bigger pieces that we want but they're too big, some of them. And it just, look at that. It just kind of is like a ball of clay in a way. And what this means to me, what this is telling me is that it's gonna have a lack of air. There's not gonna be a whole lot of airflow. And you can make an argument and say, oh, well, maybe the Kellogg's has more nutrients than the other one. Maybe it's more nutritious. Um, I don't know if that's true, but let's just say it is for the sake of an argument. But I'll tell you right now, the issue with all this stuff, guys, is gonna be simply the simple fact that there is a difference in air. And roots of our plants need air. Without airflow, they're not going to be healthy. So this actually is a store-bought basil plant. I could have started a lot, I could have started it from seed. But in here is really not a whole lot of airflow because it's peat moss and perlite exclusively. You can see the roots are pretty healthy. They're white. They're getting to that darker color, which is a good sign that it's time to up pot this. Um, I could definitely up pot this and that's what I'm going to do today. I've gotten multiple pickings off of this, which is really good. I haven't had to feed it. I haven't had to um, do much really care at all except for just water it, which is good. But at a certain point, and especially this soil here, is way worse than what's in that basil plant, is I'm telling you that it's just becoming a anaerobic mess, is really what it is. So my big recommendation here is not necessarily to you know bash this, this soil here, but it's to find something that is gonna have good airflow to it. You can really imagine yourself that when the soil's in the ground, and your plants are in the ground as well, are the plants gonna get an adequate amount of, first off, moisture, right? That's obviously key. But most of this is gonna hold the right amount of moisture. All, all the bag products are gonna, they're gonna have a, red, a good amount of moisture to them, but are they gonna have enough air? And I think that's the key here is that this is not. It's, it's not also, uh, the big difference maker is whether or not the material is broken down some compost, in fact, you may not even want to use right away because it's not broken down enough. And you may want to let the compost sit there for another year after you buy it. I mean, it's just difficult, I think, and it's really a struggle for a lot of us out there to find a bagged product that is well broken down, that's made of compost, that has the right drainage, that has good aeration to it. Um, yeah. So I'm sort of stuck with this and I'm gonna probably fill in some of this here in this raised bed, but it's gonna be very minimal. And uh, I just need some material here to fill in different spots in the yard um, at the community garden. And that's all I'm gonna use this for is really, if it's a permanent location like this raised bed, it's very, very little. We're gonna amend it with quite a bit. I'm gonna put the real good stuff on top and uh, that's it. So I hope you guys find some deals, but of course, be wary of what it is that you're buying. Look at the materials, look at the ingredients on the back. Hopefully it's organic. Um, you can of course amend this stuff and of course it can break down over time. Um, but you know, is this gonna be, if I were to grow exclusively in this garden soil, would I have success? Very little. And it's amazing, you know, some people are already automatically will blame the soil and not the grower. 
And I actually think in this particular case, it's probably the soil and not the grower. Um, you'll be amazed, I think, at the difference that you guys will have in your plants with the right amount of air into the soil, which then really helps those roots become healthy and then therefore the plant is healthy. So thank you guys for watching this one. Uh, check us out on Fig Boss on Facebook and Instagram, and we will see everybody soon, all right? See you for tomorrow's video, guys. Take care.